All right, so let's talk about burning meditation. Okay. And how it uh, is an important aspect of um, opening the third eye. Right. More or less. Well, not more. I mean, not less, more. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's more than important. Yeah. You know? So it's, uh, um, I, I think it's, out of all the meditations that I've done, it it's definitely the m most important of of all things that I've done. You know, because there's very little, yeah, you know, just being human beings. I mean, we experience things in our lives, you know, over the course of our lives that accumulate and leave, you know, residue of stress and mental fatigue. And so, and of course, we accumulate that stuff all the time, even if we learn, you know, you go to do yoga, you do qigong or, you know, any of those energetic exercises, even if you do meditation, <clears throat> it's fine. But again, there's a more from the Eastern camp, there's an axiom that says, you know, if you acquire st stress mentally, then you need to get rid of it mentally. You have to have a technique to get rid of it mentally. Because a lot of people will say, oh, I get rid of my stress by running or exercising. And it's like, yeah, you, you'll feel better, but you're not going to get rid of your stress that way. And so, because if you've acquired it mentally, you know, you've got to have some technique to get rid of it mentally. And so uh, it's sort of like if we look at an analogy with physical things, like if I get an injury, let's say I just get, you know, an injury from working out. And, uh, you know, it's it's bad enough where, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm seen by somebody to look at it and just to evaluate it and make sure that it's nothing more serious than what it is. Um, but what the, what do they do? They send you to physical therapy, right? So you're physically, you know, working those things out, working that that stressor out of there by, you know, correcting with other, you know, exercises that, you know, uh, will balance out that muscle structure or whatever it is that you're doing, right, to sort of bring the whole system back online, that piece that's injured, right? Everything around it is being worked in order to bring that back online and get it done. It could be massage, it could be all kinds of things that they do, right? But that's physical injury, physical, you know, correction. And so the same thing with this, if we get stress in a mental way, then we need a mental uh, correction somehow. And there are other ways to do it, obviously, but I've just found that out of all the ways that I've tried and all the ways that I've worked, the burning meditation, um, is the most practical because I think it has the broadest effects. I mean, it can be narrowed into a single focus, but it has a very, you know, it can be very broad as well. Like people don't have to actually recognize, you know, a specific thing that, you know, has stressed them out in the past or whatever, right? It's not like, oh, I've got to go back to, I don't remember what happened when I was five. You know, it's like, you don't have to, you know, it's like in doing this, it's, it's, uh, generic enough in this case that it's it's burning all of that and that's and as that's being burned off more and more is coming to the surface right where it can be accessed and you may have a memory of it you may not it doesn't really matter in that case so you're just burning off whatever comes up but <clears throat> moving forward if it is something that's specific then you can uh, target that Specifically, it, rep it still represented the same way within the structure of the meditation, right? It's this black that comes out of the pores of the skin, right? So it can be, you know, like uh, I've seen it as little as dust, you know, and it's some like ash that comes out. It's dark anyway, uh, oil. Um, and sometimes it can be thick on certain areas, right? It's not going to be uniform, not always. I mean, it could be, but it's not always. Um, it could be like, you know, like almost like tree bark, you know, thick clumps of it that come off that even in the meditation sometimes you'll pull that off and now what is burn that it. <clears throat> it's just a representation it's a symbolic representation of stress and mental fatigue and as long as you've made that link again we're talking about basic sympathy right we've made the link that, that we've told ourselves in our subconscious that the the black that's being pushed out represents stress and mental fatigue so my uh my subconscious, uh, speaking in the language of symbols, recognizes that as that stress and mental fatigue. So the stronger I relax or the more uh, completely I relax before I do this, the more of, let's say, more of a percentage of that links directly to the stress and mental fatigue that I've acquired. And so as I'm burning that off, 
it's really, it's taking a lot of that away from me. And, and literally, um, you know, it's just excess. So it's sending it back into wherever, you know, we could name it or not name it. I don't name it because I don't really know where it goes. You know, it's like, that's one of those technical things that I'm not, I'm not sure. It just goes back into the general, uh, matrix of whatever is here right so you know it's just more energy that's let go but but we know that um stress you know it's an it's an excess right it's something that you cling to or you, it hangs on to you and blocks your normal <clears throat> rapport with the world it it's something heavy that you're carrying around with you that's residual from something that you've experienced and you can't let it go so is it an actual like energetic material that's in the body or in the mind or do you think of it more as like channels that are blocked or how, how does that actually... i mean blocking channels isn't really i mean that's sort of a misnomer that's put out there i i believe you know it's like when you say something be again very being very specific with the words i mean a channel that's blocked would be nothing gets through that right, right. it's like a pipe that gets blocked it's something that's packed so hard in there, the water can't get through or whatever. And, um, you know, they're not like that. If you had a blocked channel, there would be no sensation beyond that point. Mm. So it's not very likely that it's blocked. And so I try not to use that word, but I like the idea of channels being impeded. And mm -hmm. so, because that just means that the capacity for them to carry a full charge through is reduced. And so that's, you know, much easier to first of all comprehend and second of all it gives us a method to be able to open them to full capacity again right so that's more like it's just you know sort of like a bottleneck right mm -hmm. so instead of the channel being like this it it's like this and so mm -hmm. you know what we do is as we burn that stuff off it moves the channel back into its normal configuration and then once that's free flowing we do other techniques to help to expand them to make them bigger mm -hmm. and so you know your whole energy anatomy becomes larger you know the channels become larger they're able to carry more energy through and so <clears throat> that's a big a big um, uh, uh, let's say that that's the way that things like qigong and yoga and uh, any kind of energetic exercise like that builds us up it's not necessarily that it's um, pulling, you know, that your energy is being expanded. It's more that the energy is expanding because, uh, you know, the, the channels are more open. And so the whole system is flowing, the conduits getting bigger. Let's put it that way. That's probably a better way to think about it. And so anything that's residual after you start, after you stop the exercise proper and you walk away from that, you know, it's sort of like, you know, the conduit itself is walking away and, you know, it's being, it's been pushed out and expand it so then you're carrying more as you walk out and that's how you know repetitive uh, um, you know exercises like that will continue to expand and make you better and better able to withstand more able to deflect more of those things so you're not clinging to those things as much it gives you stressful events stressful events you know even physically stressful events you know you're mm. you deflect it more you know it's like it doesn't have the impact that it normally would on you and so i mean i can kind of intuitively get a sense of like why it's important for that for for those channels to be open and things like that for, for to open up the ability to see energy directly but mm -hmm. can you walk me through it like why how, what's the connection there sure i mean uh in a way we uh it makes us more sensitive right so the idea is that when the channels are open when the channels more. are open we're more sensitive so uh and the more we can even say the more free flow that's going through you you become more sensitive Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I'm trying to trying to get just the right wording for this. So sure. that it's not under so that it's understandable, uh, <clears throat> and all of this stuff is you know contrived with the words because it's tough tough to talk about something that you can't really see for most people, right? And right. it's hard to know you know or what are we actually doing here? We can just we make inferences, you know, how these things consistently help most people 
be able to do this one uh, specific aspect of well, energy work. Here's the thing. It's like when you learned this, I think you were in a situation where you had somebody that was there to say, do this, do this, do this, you know, and, and so it's like you did it and it worked, right? Right. And but not always, you know, and the, the, maybe the harder part to understand is that, um, uh, for whatever reason, I stuck with it because, uh, you know, where a lot of people didn't, you know, they came, they spent time there, they left, they came, they spent time there, they left. Um, because the way that <clears throat> I learned it, the way it was taught, there wasn't a lot of question back and forth. Like right, it's like you don't ask questions. You don't ask questions. You, it's you, just, just, do. you just do it. And it's like if you don't do it, you're out. And if you do it, you're in, in you know, and you can stay as long as you want. And that's right. fine. And, and so this is such a different situation <clears throat> where everybody's sitting at home watching on the computer and, and they have to kind of decide to sit down and do a burning meditation right however many times a, a week there whatever that they're going to do it and right and no and and it's sometimes it's like oh yeah he did that and that somehow fit into the puzzle piece you know it's nice but it's like but okay but I, at least for myself i have way easier time to sit down to do the thing that requires dis a certain level of discipline if i really can have a bridge of understanding in my head like this is really important i mean i think it's self-evident in the relative brevity of this course that mm -hmm. like we've really said like these are the things that are the most important to to achieve this goal but at the same but, time but it's we're still taking like, a certain level uh, farther right because it's not just important I could tell you that a lot of things are important you want to know why it's important yeah I do I do <laughs> to make sense of it yeah, right and so it's, and that's I think uh, again that's something that uh, you know, a lot of things like this don't do and and that's one of the gaps that we're trying to bridge here is that totally. we want people to understand what they're doing and as much as we know why they're doing it so that, uh, you know, they can have that, I, I think, the context of what they're doing and how does that piece fit into this puzzle and make it much better, you know? How does it cut your learning curve down? I mean, I think that's, I'm always trying to go to that practical end of it. Does this, in this order, cut the learning curve down or, you know, or the things that they need to know before this to get the maximum out of that. And sometimes yes, sometimes no. We're still sort of playing with it to find out. I'm always messing with it to see, you know, does, if I do this first, is this going to, how does that change my end result? If I do this other one first, how does that change my end result? Does it work that or way? Or if I do it less or I don't <coughs> do it at all, does it exactly. make a difference? Can yeah. I still see energy even if I'm not doing a burning meditation? Right, or, right. You know, whatever. Right. Because it's, because when we're thinking about, you know, our time, in an economical way, it's like, oh, I only have so much time in the day, and which exercise do I do? And it's yeah, true. I really want to see energy, but, you know, I yeah. only have so much time to practice, so which thing do I do, and how right. do I prioritize it? And so I think that understanding what it's doing and how it fits into the puzzle, then it's like, I think it makes it easier to prioritize, you know? It's so funny because, I mean, in some ways, it's just sort of almost a side note, you know, but since you brought it up, it just sort of sparked my memory. When I think back over the years, how many students I've had or people that I've worked with, you know, there is this funny phenomenon that the people, some of, you know, uh, uh, I would say a very, um, a big percentage of people that I've had that have really done well with this have been people that have less resources in general in life, you know, and isn't that funny? Because, I mean, you would think, I mean, and especially the way we talk about this stuff, it's sort of like, you know, you have to have a, you know, uh, you know, let's say a certain intellect, you know, maybe, you know, in a way and, and uh, uh, you know, you need to be able to obviously read and, and do things and sort of be disciplined. And we usually think of that as uh, people who are educated and, uh, you, you know, and I'm thinking, but in this case, it may not be that way. I mean, yeah, you have to have a certain amount of intellect to be able to understand what we're talking about and at least, you know, uh, uh, sort of, you know, project it out there so that you have a goal to go after and understand basically what you're trying to do. But a lot of times, you know, when I look back, it's like, wh why is it that the people that had the least amount of resources actually progress faster and did it you know, and, and achieve the goal quicker. And I think, you know, if I had to really think about it without actually questioning them <laughs> relentlessly would be they had less distractions, you know? So it was like, 
you know, when we talk about we only have this much time in the day or whatever, well, you know, let's start logging how much time we have actually. You know, it's like literally, you know, take one of those uh, notebooks and mark every five minutes or whatever it is. I mean, you know, everybody's done these things now. It's 20 years in the making of, you know, people trying to figure out timing and, uh, uh, you know, where you spend your time in the day. But you'll find, like, when you do that, the big shock is that people waste a lot of time, you know, and people, uh, you know, they're doing other things that aren't really uh, affecting them, really, other than giving them a break or a distraction. So, <clears throat> But with people that have less resources, they they don't have nearly the the distraction factor because they can't afford to have distraction factor. You know, it's like, and they have sort of a innate sense that they're, you know, they're moving toward a better life. And so this is literally something that they don't really need much other than their discipline to do it that will move them in that direction. Or other people sort of like, well, yeah, I could do this, but then I want to do this, and I want to go to the movies, and I want to do this, and I, you know, I'm going to hang around, I'm going to chat with my friend, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go on YouTube and watch, you know, kittens hugging stuffed animals or whatever the hell it is, right? And so, you know, there's all of these things, and, uh, you know, so you're trying to fit it in with all of these things instead of saying, you know, wipe all that stuff off the table, and here's, here's, you know, something that's going, I'm going to devote you know, a certain amount of time every day to, and the more that I can, you know, put into this, the more I'm going to get out of it. And, you know, I think when, you know, imagine, you know, yourself in a, you know, in a monastic situation or whatever, something like that, where you have hours and hours and hours of time that is, you know, all you can do is, you know, pray or read or, or, you know, do your meditations or whatever it is. It's built into the schedule. So, uh, <clears throat> as a group and singly, right? And even when you're working in the gardens or cooking food or doing whatever, it's still like you're sort of in that mindset so often that you just sort of, it, it, it pervades everything that you do, right? So, and I feel that sometimes less is more in that case, you know, that, that uh, you know, we, if you don't have the resources to have a lot of distractions, you know, you're almost better off because, well, this is an avenue to get me to a different place, you know? And so, you know, I'm gonna, I have nothing else to do. I'm gonna do this more and more. And as they see the benefits come on, it's like, it doesn't take anything to sort of, you know, put even more time into it or find more blocks of time to do that. So, you know, the television gets turned on less in the day and, you know, all of these other little things, you know, start to go by the wayside as we start to see that, uh, uh, you know, what you're doing is, getting you closer to your goal, whatever that is. So, I don't know, it's just one of those things that sort of popped in my head when we were talking about, yeah. you know, how much, you know, why are we doing this and what's the context within, you know, why are, where does this fit in? You know, where does the burning meditation fit in? And I think a lot of times that the burning meditation, because it can be so general that, uh, it can burn off a lot of those things, you know, with like, let's say, you know, you're doing a lot of that stuff, wasting a lot of time. It's like, and you, there's a part of you that's going like, oh, I just wasted another hour. Geez, I should be doing my meditation or I could be doing, I don't feel like it. How do, you know, <clears throat> all of that stuff. But after you've wasted the time, then you're sort of, there's a bit of residual there that's, that's, that's hanging on like, oh, well, that sucks. I just wasted another hour of my life that I'll never get back, <laughs> you know? And, uh, which is basically friction. It's friction. Yeah. And so that builds up, right. And over time. And so the burning meditation, a lot of times can take off those layers of stuff so that, you know, not only are we burning off the stress and mental fatigue of that, but it gives us a clearer, more clear vision of, okay, now, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to go and do this and let's see how I feel afterwards. Cause of course, once you do something, it's just like going to the gym. Like sometimes it's a pain in the butt, right? To go to the gym, you know, oh, I've got to go there. I've got to drive there. I've got to get changed. I've got to do my workout and then I'd get changed and I come home. But once you're in it, once you get there, once you get going, right. And then when you leave, you feel great, right? It's like, it's not only that you did the thing that was healthy for you, but you feel good about it. So that residual feeling goes with you and it's like you've accomplished something. So, you know, basically, you know, 
all of those things in the course of a day, you know, do you have more things that you're bashing yourself about at the end of the day? Or do you have more things that you're like praising yourself at the end of the day? You know, do you just feel naturally good about that you accomplish? How many accomplishments do you have at the end of the day? How many, you know, <laughs> disappointments do I have at the end of the day? <clears throat> so, and I think, you know, one of the things that we don't talk about much is that uh, the burning meditation is a great way to, you know, Yes, get rid of the stress and mental fatigue that goes with those disappointments. But at the same time, in doing that, it clears your vision to, you know, make a different choice the next time. And it's easier to get in there and do that. And then we start the momentum rolling in the other direction. And I think that that has a huge factor of building things up as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's funny. I, I wish that there was a, a more scientific way to illustrate or demonstrate what it is that's happening in the meditation. Cause at least for myself, I come with, come to it with that kind of a mind or attitude, mm -hmm. but it's one of those things like, um, we we recorded the guided meditation for it right. the other night, right? And sure. so I did it while you were <coughs> recording it. And then uh, I did it again in the morning. And it had been, you know, a couple of weeks since th the last time I'd even done a burning meditation mm -hmm. and having done it at night. And then first thing again in the morning, it was like after, you know, we got up, had breakfast or whatever, I felt like fantastic. And not just like physically, but like mentally clearer. Like it was, I found it easier to... Uh, you know, let's say even just put my mind on positive things. Right. And just there was just less chatter or less like background noise, let's mm -hmm. say. And so it's like those things come through in your experience of doing it and doing it's like the more you do, the better you feel, just like you're saying, just like with exercise. Right. But I wish there was a way to say like, oh, you know, it's like this is exactly what's happening and this is what it's moving or getting rid of. Like, yeah. And I mean, at some point you may discover that for yourself and you may discover it in a way that you can, you know, show people. I mean, again, I mean, I hate to beat a dead horse, but uh, if you could see, you know, somebody's aura, somebody's energy, sphere of sensation, however you want to call it, uh, you would see like, the, here's the before, here's the after. Right. Before burning meditation, after burning meditation. I guess that's one of my questions. And you would be able to see the difference. You can see it. Oh, yeah. And it's like, there's no comparison. How, what's the difference? Like, what is the The sphere is expanded. And it's moving much quicker than it normally would. And the colors are much cleaner. So it's like one of the things that we look for in somebody's uh, sphere, if they're not feeling well or they're tired or, you know, any little thing that's just not right with them, right? It doesn't have to be disease. It can be anything really. Um, you'll see uh, sort of muddy colors, right? You'll see it, they're a little... Um, there's a lot of brown mixed in with them or whatever. They're not quite as clear and clean as they can be right so not that brown's bad but it's like there's a difference between like a a muddied up brown and a clean brown right <clears throat> if we want to say it that a, a clear color a sharp clear color uh and so uh, you know when we see that that's sort of muddy we know that something's not quite right there you know that it's you know something's not happening and and it's like think of like uh <laughs> you know those uh I don't even know if they have them anymore, but you know, those, uh, 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 the lamps that had like the fibers, the mm -hmm. optic fibers that were coming out of them. I mean, they, they were all, sorry, they were the rage in like the seventies. <laughs> so it's like, but that's, that's the deal. Right. And, uh, um, but I always thought like, if you had that, but expanded that idea by like millions of those very, very thin, almost hair like fibers, not fibers like the fiber optic right but hair like fibers but they you know there's not just a point of light at the end of them but it's like it makes a like an egg-shaped spot a loop around it right and there's just millions of them you know vertically like this all the way around right and and that spins on an axis right so it spins and so at a certain level of seeing you can see that moving and so and you can see the whole thing expanding and can tracting you know it's like not like breathing but you know it it does you know move out and move back um and so when somebody's not feeling quite right or things are better or like maybe even waking up first thing in the morning it's it's spinning very slow you know it's moving very slow and, and it, there's a direct correlation between you know how fast that's spinning and somebody's awareness of what's going on around so anytime you start to feel uh 
you know, dull or like things are confusing or I, you know, not able to clear my head. I can't come up with the right words Feeling or down whatever. Down on myself. Down on myself. Anything. Or... You can, gar I guarantee you that, you know, if you could see and you'd look in the mirror, you'd see that you're, you know, that sphere is moving very slowly. And that's the way when you walk down the street, you'll see that most people's spheres are moving very slowly, like they're, you know, sort of in molasses, so to speak, you know, just moving very, very slow. When somebody's very energetic, it's one of the reasons that we can pick out somebody that's, you know, very energetic and does a lot of work is that their sphere is not only expanded, but it's moving very, very fast and the colors are clear and bright. So the light being emitted is very clear. And, uh, that just shows a clarity of thought and a clarity of purpose and that they're, you know, they're doing things in the right, you know, the right way and uh, they're sharp, you know, so uh, it's just, it's one of those things. So if you could see it, that would be yeah. one of those, it doesn't explain the mechanism. No. You know what I and mean? You know, but I it's don't like... think I was really looking for the mechanism, <laughs> even though I stated it that way. Mm -hmm. I think that that was really exactly what I wanted to, because it helps me to make the connection between like, okay. You can see that this exercise makes someone's field spin faster and you associate faster spin or movement and brighter colors with clearer awareness. That's right. And if you're trying to see energy, more awareness we, is definitely part of the process. More awareness is better and, and more clarity, right? Because right. It's you like, need I mean, that mental clarity to do the exercise. I mean, think about it. We focus. call it clairvoyance, right? clear vision so it's like you know I mean that's almost like a sixth sense of seeing mm -hmm. right clear vision clairvoyance you know sometimes we think of it like from a medium standpoint sure. you know, like oh I'm just you know I have incredible psychic vision or whatever you know but it's like at the same time it is a mental process right it's it's something it's in our minds and we're you know giving it uh, uh, we're giving the subconscious you know, the parameters of what we want to see at that point in time. But if, if this is moving so slow and it's sort of like you're in a bag, like a muslin bag, yeah, you can, the pores are so big that you can see out of it, but it's all sort of, it's sketchy, right? It's like, it's just, um, I can see, but it's, it's fuzzy around it, right? It's not very clear. It's not bright and clear, right? Mm. So, uh, you know, it's sort of like taking that bag off your head and, being able to see clearly, I think that that's sort of in the realm of, of what we're talking about as much as we can, you know, as much as we can pin it down. Right, yeah. Everybody's experience will be slightly different, but those are some of the generic things that people, uh, um, you know, that we can report back to each other and say, okay, you know, this is, yet yeah, that's, that's, we're correlating the information, right? And saying, yeah, we're all seeing the same thing. So, and that's good. We're independently writing it down. So nobody's like really, uh, you know, just copying what everybody else says and wants to agree, right? Agreeable bias, right? It's like, no, it's like, we're doing it as independent, even though it's small groups, right? It's like, it's independently checked between us. And because we want the truth more than we want to be right. So it doesn't matter if somebody's seeing it a little bit differently or whatever. It's like, it's, it's good to have all of those different pieces of information to so, try to figure out what's going on. So you're just suggesting that when we begin to see that we would do it with other people and, and be able to verify that. I think that that's a good accurate. thing. You yeah. know, I mean, it's not something that's, you know, it's not like you're grabbing somebody and, you know, telling them, oh, I see auras. Let me, let me do, you know, they're going to like, stamp you as kook in the head and they're gonna you know stay away from you so i mean some will others won't you know but the idea is that if you have a small group of friends that you can do it with and you can build it it's of course anything in a group is going to be easier right because now you're checking each other helping each other out supporting each other and That'd doing be a it cool thing to do at a live event absolutely yeah yeah yeah, because it just helps no matter what. It, it, it does help. Plus, there's a group mind that happens too. So each one is being supported by the whole. Yeah. And that makes a big difference. It's a mastermind, right? That's, I mean, a lot of people talk about that with business and this and that and the other thing. But it's just as easy to do. I mean, where did those mastermind concepts come from? That wasn't, business people didn't figure that out. Or they figured it out for business, but they didn't, they didn't invent that. That came from esoteric traditions. We've been doing masterminds for eons. <laughs> so it's like there's there's you know there's no way that it's uh, that was just something that was designed it's just that 
you know, and I say this all the time, it's like, bravo, you know, they, you know, these business guys have picked up the stuff that really works and they've tuned it for their own, you know, what they want to do, right? They've tuned it for their own benefit, which is fine. You know, that's what everybody does. I mean, they tune it for their own benefit and, and, uh, you know, it just, there's happens to be, you know, promoting their businesses, right? Whatever they are, but there's nothing new there. Uh, there's not a single, uh, there's not a single self-help thing, modern or not modern, out there that didn't, uh, did, wasn't derived from an esoteric tradition technique. There isn't one. I've, I've laid this challenge down forever and there isn't one, okay? It's like, what about this? What about NLP? What about this? What about that? And it's like, yeah, it's the same candy bar, different wrapper, you know? They put it in modern terms or whatever, but I can show you something that was printed or, you know, recorded a thousand years ago that was the same thing <laughs> just without all the psychopomp around it you know without all the uh you know pop psychology terms and whatever it is right so sure. it's like now we're just proving it out with neurology right so again science is proving out something that we've done for a long time and you know giving it some kind of validation if you go for that and that's good i like that you know i'm 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 big into that you know I love it when they confirm that it just it's one more thing that helps me but and helps me to help other people too but I didn't need that beforehand to make it work so it's not like you know we like it to confirm but uh, uh, you know it's not like we're waiting for that uh, you know those those um, test results to come back in order to say, oh, now I'm validated. <laughs> you right. Know? You validate it by your own experience. I validate it by my experience and being able to check it out, which is, you know, I mean, everybody's experience is worth something. It's just that if I, if I have a little thing with it, it's like your experience is good for yourself. But if you're going to start extending, you know, the information to other people, it's like, you need to be able to verify, you know, on a regular basis that what you're doing is helping or not, you know, so you can adjust yourself, not to be bad or good, just to adjust yourself. And it doesn't negate your experience. It's just that when you start to transition it to somebody else, you need to make sure that it's, it's correlated well enough that, that they can get, the, you know, hopefully they can get the same experience too. You know, sure. So, so with the burning meditation, how, you know, since we're not, like necessarily doing like a do this now today at this time and then do it tomorrow at this time or do whatever um how do you what's your guideline for for people that are i mean we're really designing our own practice around achieving right. this goal we're just right. giving everybody the tools and hopefully a really clear understanding of how to use them so yeah you know how I, I think that uh, the best would be uh, if I had an ideal situation, if I was going to, if somebody said to me, I have all the time in the world, give me my ideal, <laughs> you know, technique. I'd say in the beginning, do as much as possible because, you know, you've got a lot of years to burn off. We accumulate a lot of crap and a lot of it just gets pushed down or compressed into other things, right? And, you know, it's amazing how when you burn that stuff off, how your life starts to change. You see things differently. You see things more clearly. You know, we could say that maybe even it's the preliminary before, you know, seeing energy, you know, comes on board. We're seeing our lives more clearly. You know, the burning meditation does that. You know, it takes away the layer of crap, you know, that is like clouding or filtering our judgment and what we see in a regular, on a regular day, you know. So, um, there's a lot of benefit to that because you're not acquiring more of it. You know, you're acting accordingly and, and hopefully properly. And, you know, it's, it's moving much better for you. So I would say, you know, if somebody had an average amount of time to spend on this, I'd say, you know, two days a week, um, a decent, you know, let's say a long burning session, you know, where it's like, between a good relaxation, like the long guided meditation that we did, right? So it's like, Two days a week of that, you know, if you can break it up a little more equal, it's good. You know, so you spend one, you know, this is one of those meditations where if you do it at night, it's okay. You, you're not going to stay awake by doing that. It'll, you know, you'll, you can be back into a normal, <laughs> ready for bed afterwards if you need to do that. Uh, so I would do that. And then, 
you know, uh, a short version, maybe even like 20 minutes or 30 minutes of burning, you know, on the other days, you know, really, it's like, that's one where I don't think you can do too much. I've done it every day for an hour for years. And, um, I, I haven't seen any hitting a wall with anything like that. I don't do it like that now, but there were times when I did and, and I would be okay with going back to that too at any time if I needed it. And that's, uh, uh, I've never seen a detriment from doing too much. Let's mm -hmm. say, I don't know if there is too much really, except that if you hit a spot where it's very clear, then, you know, you don't, hopefully at some point you don't need to do it as much. Right. Yeah. I haven't hit so, that yet. <laughs> so basically like if I'm hearing you correctly, like if I'm sitting down to do one of the other exercises or one of the other um, meditations, whether it's gazing or wind breathing or mm -hmm. any of the other things that we'll go over and you're feeling like sluggish or distracted or any of those things, this would be like a perfect thing to be like, okay, this isn't really benefiting me right now. I'm not getting right. anywhere with this. Burning was going to clear this stuff out and help me to yeah. actually get some effect from these other things. Absolutely. I mean, you know, because sometimes even even a different type of meditation will go, it's not going as well as it normally did. Now this could be due to a lot of things, right? It could just be your natural biorhythms at that time of the day and maybe another time of the day would be okay. And, um, or, you know, many other factors why, you know, maybe you drank too much the night before, maybe you ate bad food for sure. breakfast, you know, you sure. had a, you know, I don't know, McMuffin on the way in. It's like all of a sudden <laughs> it's just sitting there and it's taking all my energy to break the crap down, right? It's like, sure. but uh, at the same time, um, so what do I do in that case? So do I just, you know, flush the day? No, you know, it's like, oh, what can I do instead that's going to be more beneficial for me at this point? Well, burning is going to be that thing. And we have, let's say, um, augmented types of burning that we call different types of meditation but basically it's an augmented type of burning that's more specific it's targeted and that's a little different so but the generalized burning is what i would do anytime i feel sluggish or anything like that you know just like there are a few qigong exercises that i know you know spin your aura up faster you know so it's like okay now you're a little more charged up you're ready to go right if you're feeling sluggish or whatever there's there are things that will do that um but you know we don't pull them out of context for the most part it's like you need to do the whole sequence for a long time and really get used to it and then you can sort of cherry pick here and there not you know it doesn't negate the full set but it you know you can pull certain exercises out that you know will have that you know affinity to ramp you up a little bit more and that's a good thing too so the burning meditation is like that if i'm feeling really out of it or foggy or whatever the burning meditation even the short version is good to do right and you don't always i mean the other thing is the guided meditation is good because if you're tired or you're not if you don't know it it guides you through it obviously it makes it easier in the beginning but it's not that difficult there aren't that many parts to it so once you get it down you know you want to memorize it and then you know you'll augment it as you get better and say okay you know it's like i don't need to do 40 minutes of relaxation i can do uh you know 10 minutes of relaxation really get into that same place because I've been doing it for so long and then you know I'll get a good 30 minutes of burning in you know instead of you know that reversed equation there where 30 minutes of relaxation or 40 minutes of relaxation and 20 minutes of burning or whatever right. so it's but you're only going to get that because we didn't record anything like that we did a shorter version but it's not that short right and but so if you can do those 20 minute segments of like you know 10 minutes or five minutes of relaxation and get into a good relaxed state and then 20 minutes of burning. Well, that's fantastic, right? So those would be the, the, the 20 minute versions or whatever, that's, that's good, right? you know, for a daily type of thing. Yeah, I, it's just, there's so much value to it. I mean, and again, I definitely am biased because I've done it for so long and it was one of the first things that I learned how to do and they put such a high value on it for so many things. I I, I teach it to, um, uh, with nothing to do with this really, but I teach it to, um, uh, <clears throat> mental health care workers and, and, you know, who have a seriously high burnout rate, physicians who have a seriously high burnout rate because of all the stress and fatigue that they get and the stuff that they collect from having interaction with lots of people all day long. I mean, 
these people are overworked, seriously. And they get, as much as they get schooling on what they do, psychology, you know, medicine, whatever, they don't get any education on, you know, that I can see, that I've been told, um, that helps them with, you know, energetic baggage, basically. You know, it's like, sort of like, get your own therapist, you know, <laughs> it's like, that ain't helping, you know, it's not going to burn that stress off, you know, not in a way that's adequate. It might make you feel a little better that you're talking to somebody about it, but it's not going to burn it off. It's still there. And so you need a way to actually get rid of it and, uh, you know, reduce, it, reduce the load down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, and they find it very valuable. I do that on a fairly regular basis, you know, with groups in my community and others that ask me to come in and do that. That's a big deal. And because it's such a high burnout rate, I mean, it's like, think about it this way. If you look at it from a practitioner standpoint, it's like basically by the time they're starting to really know what they're doing, they're burnt out. Mm. It's like, that sucks. You know, it's like, here's these guys with 20 years experience or 25 years experience, you, you know, they're maybe in their mid 40s late 40s and they're already burning out because it's like they can't they just can't deal with all the psychic baggage that they're getting on a regular basis well that's not good you know <clears throat> so just when they're sort of getting to the point where they were to be considered you know professional by let's say <laughs> you know by chinese standards anyway let's put it that way you know it's like you got to get 20 30 years under your belt before you're actually considered let you know what you're doing so and uh you know we do have different standards here but geez just by the time you know by by that standard by the time that they're in the range of being professional they're already getting out you know or worse you know we hear those horror stories all the time right they're just sure. they're out of their minds at that point or whatever they can't, sure. can't handle the load and i believe i really believe that that's that's psychic baggage that's being cl that's clinging to them and they don't learn a way to get rid of that and I, the burning meditation is the perfect mechanism to do that perfect mechanism to do that and just to reiterate one of the thing one of those markers for how effective the meditation is again to the degree of relaxation correct right right absolutely so just think of it as a percentage right thing and one of those things that i think you've said in the past too is that like when you're in the burning segment of the meditation and you're imagining that that part of it, uh, the more real your inner experience becomes and the more uh, it, you know, I, I guess maybe you could talk just a little bit about that. Like, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's probably a better thing to visualize, right? It's like, just think of like you have, uh, like think of this room being a split screen. So there's me and there's you, right? Or, or there's me doubled, right? And so one side is just a, you know, me in a black room and then me here in the studio hanging out and talking to you. And if I'm going to do my meditation here, then uh, it's like all of a sudden as this part starts to dull down and become darker and darker and becomes, you know, more black, the other side is starting to come up, but I'm in a different location, right? I'm at the, on the cliff above the beach or whatever it is. And so the more real that is, the less real this room becomes, right? So it's like, and it literally is an equal thing. The more real that is, the less real this is. And so I'm trying to shift my consciousness to make that, you know, like practically a lucid dream type state, right? Where it's like, literally I can uh, engage all of my senses there, right? Ideally, not right in the beginning, right? Sure. But ideally, you know, it's like, like I said, I mean, uh, you know, it's not just a visual, Right. It's like I hear it and it's, you know, there are variances to it that make it more like I'm sitting in a, you know, in a nature scene. Right. And, you know, I can smell the sea. I can, you know, I feel the spray, you know, that type of thing, which is, you know, even um, if I were at that place, I'm not in a place where I could feel the spray. Right. So it's just something that's there, but it, it comes up almost as a, uh, Un, it, it's unbidden by me, right? It, it, it enters into that idea and just puts in another layer of reality for me, right? It's a tactile sensation. And, uh, you know, obviously the smell and, you know, I mean, I've 
tasted salt on the air, that type of thing. You know, it's just like there's all of those things. If I move my feet around, I smell like earth smells coming up. You know, it's like all of that stuff is there. And the more real I can make that when I do my relaxation and the burning there, you know, more of that transfers back to my physical body as well, right? So it's not just, you know, my emotional and energetic body that's getting washed well, out and burned out, but the physical body starts to recover and get better as well. Right. And so, it, but it's at the same time, it's not like there's like you're doing the meditation and then the meditation ends and when you're coming out of it, then a transfer happens like it's like okay he did this and then we're going to transfer all that data or whatever back to his physical body it's like it's happening simultaneously it's right? at the same time yeah, yeah. think so, of it like uh uh it's like if you were watching entangled particles uh, yeah. that's what it is right whatever happens to this one is happening to this one at the same time it's just that we're focusing on one at the same at once right right so but whatever i'm twisting this this one's twisting if it's rotating it's rotating you know yeah all of that so it's like that's that's that too you know i'm putting more emphasis on my mental body and where the location is there but it doesn't you know but or, the better i do that the more transfers to me sitting here my physical uh, vessel is being cleansed and my energy body here is being cleansed as well right yeah right so that's like if you were sitting and watching one of us doing the burning meditation if we were you know the more we were the more relaxed we were and the more real that internal experience became oh you see in it right our away. imaginations you can like watch the field oh yeah clearing and starting to spin faster and Absolutely. And it's so funny too, right? Because if you do that, I mean, it's fascinating to watch actually, because you're not doing anything except sitting there and breathing, right? It's not like, you know, we're doing exercises or whatever in our chairs, you know, doing that. It's like literally all in your mind. And so, uh, but you literally start seeing changes you know it's like things start to expand things start to spin things get brighter literally what was a milky or you know a muddy t type color gets brighter that milkiness or muddiness goes away and so you know it starts to become more um uh there's more equilibrium in the sphere as well right so um yeah, that's 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 a big factor too like you know, initially, you know, some people can have like little glitches and it's not that it ever is completely out of, you know, out of the normal shape. I mean, it can for, with certain things, but we won't even get into that now. But, but, the uh, you know, it's almost like the certain areas are, they look like they're gapped. They're not really gapped, but it appears that way. And so that becomes much more smoothed out and, you know, it becomes very, um, uh, the distribution is more equal all the way around. So, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. And that just happens, you know, while you're doing this, the better you and the and the key, the bridge is the relaxation. That's the thing. It's not how complex the meditation is. It's like, this is a very simple meditation, but the effects are profound. And I think a lot of times the simpler ones are like that. You know, I've done some pretty complex meditations and I know people that do even more complex than I would even think about, but, but, um, you know, and they do have a good effect, but you know, I found that the ones that are really simple, it just, they, they just have profound impact on people because you can stick with it. You can do it. It's not like, you know, we stop making those general associations that the more complex it is, the better it is. It, it's not necessarily, you know, I usually find the simpler it is, the better it is. There's less parts to break down right? right less for you to concentrate on you can concentrate on relaxing more you can concentrate on really doing the burning well and uh you know and it has huge huge benefits far way way far reaching than just seeing way beyond that it's if you know it's one of those things that if somebody wanted to learn one thing that would be the thing that i would teach them that would have an impact on their whole life <laughs> it's 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 that important so all right cool i think we'll stop there yeah that's all really right. good so people can uh jump into the next segment which is you giving another introduction to the burning right. and then there's the long form of the burning meditation and the short right. one that they can use to get used to it and have right. you guide them through it yeah absolutely awesome thanks man no problem
Great. Okay, man. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Good. Ta-da! Bam!